Hello everyone. So last Sunday was Easter and I hope everybody had a great Easter. I went to the sunrise service at our church that was outside early in the morning and that was a lot of fun. And then this week was spring break. So I hope everybody had a chance to do something fun with family or friends. My boys and I actually traveled to Mississippi where my parents live that we have not seen in over a year. And they live on lots of land in the woods. And so it was great to get away from the big city and all the traffic. And we walked in the woods and they have a big garden. So we got to help them in their garden. And we just relaxed and enjoyed, like I said, being away from the city. So today's story where we've been studying God's word and we've been in the New Testament for a while now and we're still in the New Testament. And we're once again in the book of Hebrews. And if you'll remember, we're not quite certain who wrote this book, but many people think it might have been Paul. And we're in chapter 11 in the book of Hebrews. And the title of our story today is called The Hall of Faith. So let's talk about that word faith. Let's define that word. And we can find it actually in chapter 11 of Hebrews, the first verse says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So I think you know what confidence is. That's a strong belief. And the word assurance is being very sure of something. So the people that you're going to hear about in today's story all obeyed God simply by faith. They believed what God told them. They believed in his promises, even though they did not live to see the Messiah come, that wonderful promise that they were given. But they had faith. They lived by faith. And that phrase, by faith, I looked to and I counted how many times that phrase, by faith, was in this chapter. And I want you to do that too. I challenge you. Now, I counted 22 times that that phrase, by faith, was in here. I might have miscounted. So maybe your parents or, or a brother or sister can help you find all of those phrases and see if I'm right. 22 times I counted. So it also says in verse 6 here that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we, we do, when we put our trust in Jesus and when we believe what he did for us, even though we didn't see it happen and we live by faith, God is pleased and we're not perfect and neither were these people in the hall of faith, right? They were sinners just like we are in need of a savior. And that's why the gospel is so important. And remember, this is our big picture question. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news that God sent his son Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. And that's excellent news that we all need to remember. Today's story is being read by Miss Kelly, who you might remember has taught our Sunday school classes. So let's listen to her and keep in mind that our, the, the point of our story today is that God works mightily through people who have faith in him. Let's listen. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. This morning we'll be talking about a Bible story coming from a passage in Hebrews 11. And this is um, a passage that's called the Hall of Faith. And I, I know you might be more familiar with something else that's called the Hall of Fame, which is when you get really good at throwing this or this, these sports figures, these athletes who are excellent at sports and they achieve and they work really hard and then they get um, lots of, celebration and they get put in this thing called the Hall of Fame. Um, so that's a little different from what we're going to be talking about. This is the Hall of Faith. And, and this is something that we're talking about is a list of God's people from the Old Testament who were very faithful to be obedient to the things that God asked them to do in their lives. So it really wasn't about them achieving a lot or being super 
super athletes or super achievers or anything like that. This was really about them being faithful to the things God asked them to do, which sounds not so hard, right? But actually it can be very hard. We all, we all realize this when God asks us to do things that don't make sense to us, that maybe don't line up with what we're seeing in our lives and things that feel difficult or might make us feel like we're going to look strange to other people since we're following what God is asking us to do instead of what the world is telling us to do. Um, so that's a little bit of what we're going to be talking about this morning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit of Hebrews 11 for you so you can get a taste of what we're talking about. And then we'll go back and talk about a few of these um, people from the Bible. All right, this is from he Hebrews 11. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed God and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah, his wife, was barren, he, was, he and Sarah were unable to become uh, parents because God considered him faithful. And so from this one man came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All of these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. So that's a little bit of Hebrews 11. Um, so again, the people we're talking about in this passage are people in the Bible who had a lot of faith. And, and this is something that is really pleasing to God when he sees his people demonstrate trust in him. Um, we know that we have to have faith in order to please God. Um, so Noah, let's go person by person. Here's a picture of Noah. We remember the story about Noah and the ark. Um, he obeyed God by building an ark to rescue his family. Um, and guess what? When he was doing this, what are these people doing? They are laughing. They're jeering. They're saying, what in the world are you doing? It's a bright, sunny day. Why do you need to build an ark? But Noah was simply being faithful to what God had asked him to do. So he was, he was obeying God no matter what. And by doing this, Noah warned other people because he trusted that God was telling the truth when he said a flood was coming. And this pleased God. Um, another person we can talk about is Abraham. Here's a picture of him. Abraham had faith when God called him to leave his home. Abraham didn't know where he was going, but he obeyed God. God made promises to Abraham, and Abraham believed that God was going to keep those promises. And along with that, there's a picture here of him with all these stars. There's a passage that says um, that God says, I'm going to make your descendants as numerous as the stars which is a very strange thing for Abraham and Sarah, his wife, to believe because they didn't have any children and they were 90 and 100 years old, which is a little bit old to be having a baby. Um, and the Jesus Storybook Bible says uh, that Abraham, he, he was confused and perplexed, but he trusted what God said more than what his eyes could see. And he believed. And I think that's all God is asking us to do is to trust what he says more than what we can see and to believe. So that's exactly what Abraham did. And then look what happened. He had a baby and that baby had babies and then, and so on and so on and so on. And it eventually happened that God had promised actually happened. Well, his descendants were as numerous as the stars in the sky. So others who, and uh, from the, the Old Testament who are faithful, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab had faith when she hid the Israelites, Israelite spies in Jericho. Um, King David, of course, had faith. All of these people trusted God, and many others did too. And this was not always easy. Many of these faithful people really suffered, and they died before they got to see the ultimate promise and the ultimate fulfillment, which was Jesus coming to this earth. He was the ultimate fulfillment of all these promises that God had given us. Um, and many of these people who were faithful to the Lord back in the Old Testament, 
None of them got to see that promise fulfilled, but they still believed and they were obedient to the things God asked them to do. Um, and God was pleased with them because they trusted him. Um, so anyway, that is the story for this morning. I hope you can reflect on the things that we've talked about and learned about and take comfort from seeing um, others in the faith who've gone before us who have made good choices and um, believed and been faithful to the, the call that God has put on their lives and um, have, have simply trusted him. That's all he asks us to do. So let's pray for that. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word and your truth. Thank you for these stories that are so precious. Help us to learn from them. Help us to have humble hearts and servant hearts to be able to hear what you're trying to teach us. Help us to be like these um, people listed in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be trusting like them. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our key passage has been 1 Chronicles 16, 31, and this is the last week for this one. It says, let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let them say among the nation, the Lord reigns. I hope you spent some time learning this verse and next week we will start a new one. Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve. Hope you're doing okay. Today you read one of the coolest passages in all of scripture. It's known as the Hall of Faith. Some people even call it the Hall of Heroes. Now, 
This isn't the type of heroes that you might think, right? We're not talking about Spider-Man or Iron Man or Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman or any of those. Rather, we're talking about the, the people in the Bible, the heroes of the faith, the people who um, God did big things with and God asked big things of. And this passage in Hebrews was written to celebrate what they did. At the same time, ultimately the passage isn't about them. Because all the people in the Bible, the people who listen to God and the people who don't listen to God, all the stories that we find in the Bible are meant to point us to our real hero, Jesus, who saves us from sin and from death forever. All of these heroes in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says actually that's what they did. They didn't even know who Jesus was yet, but they were looking forward, trusting God that their hero would come. And in some ways, they are heroes of our faith because of the faith they had in Jesus. We want to be like them because they wanted to follow Jesus. Not just because we want to be like them. We want to be like them as they are like Jesus. Who are some of the other heroes in your life? Maybe your mom, maybe your dad, maybe um, an uncle or an aunt, uh, somebody you know. Why are they your hero? It's really, really cool now for Pastor Steve, for me, to look back on my life and to think about all of the men and women who helped me become the man I am today, a man who believes in Jesus and who wants to follow Jesus. They aren't necessarily people you'd think of who were heroic. They weren't always tall and big and strong. They weren't rich, they weren't powerful, but they pointed me to Jesus and I'm so thankful for them. Hebrews chapter 11 celebrates people who point other people to Jesus. Who are the people who point you to Jesus? Think about that today. I hope you all have a great day. Here's your good word. May you even now become the type of person that one day will point somebody else to Jesus. Hope you have a great day.